yeah. um, it would be helpful um, as long as you're okay with that. But you were yeah. saying um, that, that your preference even post lockdown would still be virtual. Yeah, I think flexibility partly as well. So we can do, even like in Waikou, quite a few of our buyers are coming from the Auckland market. So if we want to do uh, a weekday after work or something like that, so much easier just online to, to be able to get on there. 7.30 um, was our auction. And it just worked fantastically. Um, I think having someone who is experienced in handling the purchases, um, I guess dealing with purchases, handling with each one of the phone bidders just worked so well. Um, yeah. They were, you know, they were well prepared. They were confident in terms of their actions. They, I guess, they had access to strategies they wouldn't have had if they were standing there on their own. Um, there's not that same yeah. nervousness and so on being surrounded by spectators at, a, at an on-site auction. Um, and, you know, just know that um, uncomfortable start to the auction where it's like, oh, we're going to get a bid. So I'm going to start somewhere. They were already prepped. They were already ready to go. And you try and have that discussion with people before the auction. But like maybe, maybe if you're lucky, you're doing one one a week, one, one a month uh, in auction, whereas these auctioneers are doing them every day. And just the the, the outcome was fantastic. Um, the, the other side of it is I know that neighbours would have, would have been making those comments. I know other buyers would have been making those comments. I know I could see it. I could see the buyer making those comments to David, the one that he was handling on the phone, <laughs> saying, nah, there's no way it's worth this. That's crazy. I mean, you could see that in the, the expressions going on in the in the Zoom call. So He's on the phone to me. He's on the phone to me. So this buyer, um, for those of you who are watching this, uh, Mike sold his property, of course, through a Ridstone and managed the campaign. But when I say he sold his property, it was his house as well. So he's the vendor. And uh, anyway, it's, a, it's always a hairy one when you go into lockdown and you think, shoot, you know, are we doing the right thing, continuing on? Uh, made the call to do so. And I believe that, you know, you can judge something by the fruit and it was an outstanding result. Um, but the interesting piece here, so we're handling bidders. Um, I've got a bidder. Tolpy's got a bidder, Tina's got a bidder, Mikey's calling the auction. I think it was just the three, wasn't it? It was uh, another one as well who was an investor. Um, uh, gotcha. and was that? Um, I can't remember all their names. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, there were, there were four, four potential bidders. Um, four potential bidders, three that participated. And, yep. um, and I'm on the phone with one who turned out to be the lowest, but I don't think we knew that. In fact, it sounds like when I was talking to Mike that he potentially had pegged the one that I was working with could have been the one with the most gas in the tank. I'd say this one was very well educated because you could. he's saying to me on the phone, he's going, oh, yeah, nah. And this is when we're just, at this point, we've just clipped the mill. And he's saying, yeah, no, I'm, I'm kind of out at, at around this point. I said, okay, well, no worries. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, but I ask you, keep an open mind. You know, if it's just a small bit above your limit, it might be enough to, to pull you back into the leading position. And he's basically quoting other properties to me and saying why it's not worth more and all this kind of stuff in my head. Anyway, long story short, how much further did it go for? I, I, yeah, I, I'd had limited feedback on the property because it was my own. So as soon as you gotcha. disclose to people, look, yeah, you know, I am a, you know, I used to live here until a few weeks ago. Um, this has been our family home. They just clam up, won't tell you what, what they've got to spend, won't tell you, you know, not a lot of feedback on price or anything like that. So we just looked around at the recent sales and thought, you know, high nines, maybe just over a million. Um, and I, like I answered that question, my preference is deadline sale. So majority of what I do is my <laughs> sale. Um, and I took this property to auction because it was my own and I was marketing it. So for transparency to buyers, they could all see what other people were, were prepared to pay and there wouldn't be the question of, we, we paid too much, you ripped us off kind of thing. So I was kicking myself for that decision right up until the auction. So I was thinking, shit, I've done the wrong thing here. Um, I've done this for the purchaser's best interest and it's going to shoot myself in the foot. But anyway, so fully expecting that, the, we would might just get to the reserve, which was a million, or we would pass in and I'd just sell it afterwards with a, a multi-offer. Um, and at a million and 30, it was announced on the market because it did stall um, and it just, uh, they just kept going. Um, it sold for 1185, which we would not have got. We would not have got. And that buyer only paid it because someone else was prepared to buy it for two grand less. So yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have got that at deadline sale. No way. Um, everybody who I've spoken to, including Pip, is just like, what? How? You know, um, 
So there's no way we would have got that by any other method. Now, will that happen every time? No, it won't. You know, that doesn't happen in every auction. Um, but in this particular situation, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, the team did an awesome job. Um, yeah, my preference will be, I think, for at least to try continuing to do the, the um, online auctions rather than, than on-site. Uh, and actually somebody who was lined up to, um, to deadline sale um, has said, actually, if we don't have to have it on site, then we would be keen to, to have an auction. So um, yeah, I'll be getting, getting David to do that one, uh, hopefully shortly after level four. It's actually interesting, it, isn't it, Mike? Because we had two auctions last, that last week. Mine wasn't as nearly as active as what Mike's was. But however, in regards to the price it achieved, I think even Mike would have to say he was pretty surprised that that one got over that mark. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah. I mean, and that was, I, and by the I way, had, I way. had an interesting auction process, which I'm not <laughs> going to discuss. But um, <laughs> hence, but this, this is, is interesting. why we're all this one, there for training. Pips, Pips, Pips auction was a brought forward auction. And I guess this is the point with auction is that the uh, the expectation or perhaps the general public's belief is that um, an auction success is determined by the property selling under the hammer. Um, and certainly, you know, in Mike's scenario, that's kind of like a poster boy for, wow, it sold for huge money under the hammer. What a great auction. And of course, yes, it was. But also in Pip's scenario, there was huge money available pre-auction. And I think the, the key here is we can't make decisions. It's the vendor's decision. But we offer them that opportunity to sell prior and they make the choice. They evaluate and they look at it and they go, what is it worth for me to have the certainty of a sale at this figure? And if they want that and they elect to take it, you know they've sold. But then doing your job as a salesperson, you've collected other buyers along the way, getting in touch with all of them and making sure that if they have any interest in owning that property at a price, because who knows what price they would pay, making sure you're not indicating any kind of price level to them, collecting them, getting them registered, able to bid and having them there. In some cases, they do either drive the price of the pre-auction offer up or they themselves end up securing it above that level, or they decide no way, as in the scenario with Pip, the, the other buyer was just like, there's no way it's worth that, you know, like I'm not going there. And so it, it sold to the person who initiated the pre-auction offer, but it gives our owners the opportunity of an outcome. And of course, the, the opposite side of this coin, it may be you run an auction campaign and you run the, you run the gauntlet, you bring all the buyers in, you capture them, but you don't end up securing the unconditional interest that you had hoped you would or that your vendor hoped you would. But you are then able to launch to the market. You essentially get the benefit of a second launch where you then put it into a different method of sale. Most likely, you've had price feedback that will guide your client to put a price into market. And then you can indicate whether that be inquiries over or an asking price that says, here's a line in the sand to shoot for and we welcome all interest. And the key thing here is when you're getting back on the phone to people that um, or messaging out to people that had inquired, but nothing further happened, you've now got an opportunity to excite the marketplace with your indication on price. And it's quite common that we see properties sell either the day after or in the two weeks after auction to either in the day after scenario, it's often that either a buyer who was unconditional, but didn't extend themselves far enough, decides to go further and secure it or you had somebody who was conditional waiting to see what happened with auction and immediately a multi-offer afterwards or negotiation afterwards to the vendor's satisfaction. Or in a scenario where you genuinely did not have the buyers there putting the price into the market, you're essentially launching it a second time around to the market with the price and running that new campaign, which is why you get those results in the, in the weeks after. Um, folks, thank you very much for joining us. Um, great to see you here, Tereri, Pip, Mike, you're you're my favourites. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. And this is being recorded. It's going out there. No, well, I've worked, with, I've worked with all of you. Sorry, I, I'd like to say that to you too, Ellen, but I don't believe we've met. And PB8V194C2. I'm really sorry. I have no idea who you are. So <laughs> I think they've gone. <laughs> exactly. I think they've gone. Thank possible. you, David. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Nice to see you. We'll talk again soon. Nice eh? to meet Cheers. you all. Thank you very much. Awesome. See you, mate.